Good morning. Had some audio issues, maybe still had some audio issues. We'll see. I've uh, turned up the mic a little bit and made it so that sounds from the game, at least, do eventually play through the audio. And that took a little while to set up because the audio setup on a Mac through OBS can be a little bit difficult. But hopefully we've got it all set up now. We're going to take a little walk through the project so far. Uh, we're at a really interesting moment in development here. Well, to me, it's interesting because a lot of the base content is actually in place and a lot of the show-stopping or the irritating bugs seem to have been sorted out. So there's audio design work, which I don't think makes for very good watching. Not that any of this ever makes for very good watching. But um, there's audio design work my audio design work doesn't make for very good watching because I don't have my whole library of sound effects and music ready to go where we can start just kind of sculpting and crafting the audio experience. But uh, and we're going to play around with the audio a little bit here. I've got it loaded up down there in the mixer. But uh, we're also going to just kind of walk through this so far and see where the pinch points are and try to keep working on things. Um, yeah, it's just really an interesting moment for me because I'm a little bit at a loss of what to do. I know, finish it is the big thing to do. And the audio is the big thing that's left on that. So, while this spins up, um, I'm going to try to edit some of this audio stuff. So I'm going to hit the edit in play mode. I'm going to bump up my environment a little bit, so I'll be quiet here to try to listen for this. There we go. Just getting some waves and some wind. Okay. Yeah, and I can see that's coming through the monitors. Oh, I'll leave that. That's fine. I'm just going to play. I just want it in there. So let's do a negative 30 setting for that. I'm actually going to bump up the sound effects quite a bit um, because I really want them to actually be evident. So waves, wind, there are no birds yet, so that's just a dead channel. There's no music yet, that's dead. There's no drones, that's dead. All those other channels are dead. We've just got the kind of sound effects, waves and wind going. And the waves and wind are controlled by the environment. So let's keep moving. Let's see what else we can do here. Okay, we should hear kind of a low rumbling from the soil as we zoom in. So you should be hearing some faint wind chimes. And that's to let you know that those are um, those are working. I think I might want to increase those to make it a little bit more apparent. Now we've got two sets of wind chimes going because, well, we don't. Now we'll have two sets of wind chimes going because that object and that object are now ready to collect. interesting is do we have a sparkle on this no we still do okay that's good and do we still have the wind chimes they should get louder if we get closer yep okay i'll pick that one up and let's keep building should have a coin here. Pick that one up. Portal's got to have some sound on it at some point.
all I keep hearing with that portal in my own mind is the sound of the portals opening up in um, the old mist games. That kind of like almost motorcycle sound. goes so fast, I might have to increase the length of the sound on these because they're like half a second long. So I might have to do some scripting where if the build process is like less than a second, um, we actually make it go for a second. And those almost aren't lasting long enough. chimes again because there's a collectible right there. These are going really too fast again. Yeah, they go so fast definitely need to make that sound effect last longer since they're so fast. There's a ghost going in the door. It's probably going to walk through the wall there. No, yeah, sort of. Yeah, definitely need to make those sounds last more. And here comes the ghost out the door. We should also be getting a roof. The roof is not coming on. Uh, so that's one problem here, because we're back in the kind of Middle Ages, so the roof really ought to come back onto the building. I'm not quite sure why it's not coming on. That's a bug to hunt down. I'd really like to have a better transition effect for these landscape tiles coming in at the end of a stage completion. Okay, we've got an exclamation point over here telling me there's something going on. So, um, temporal shift at the other end of the wormhole, so if we say go to other end, this will hop on. Here's our ruins, that's what we want. We need to do some audio shifts when we change time. That's the object we want little jingling is stopped again. And let's set up this artifact. So let's say it's been sacrificed, why not? And we can't open a portal, but we can open the artifact. And we can see all of these objects here. So let's start with the Roman lamp. And we'll say it's dangerous. And I hear that the background noise is still going on, uh, the environment noise is still going on while we're um, in the menu, so that's an interesting sound design issue. Okay, now let's do the thing I normally do, and let's jump all the way back to right here. So we're seeing some nice stuff happening. that time marker keeps showing up at different times, so that's really nice. Nice to see that marker jumping around. We have this giant period that's only really occupied by the Roman lamp, and there's not really going to be anything there, I bet. But let's go ahead and open this portal. People should vanish. Yep. And I'm great. I'm not getting any. Ooh, I am getting an error in the console. Where's my error? In 
invalid seek position in the sound. Hmm. Okay. Well, my ghosts are still around. The other thing which isn't appearing, which is a little bit irritating. is I should be getting my other object to rebuild should be appearing there. I thought I squashed that bug. Obviously I haven't. There's my little tarn. There's my little idol. So there's really nothing to do here now because there's nothing to rebuild. I need to figure out what's going on with that one. Yeah, the depth. there's depth problems going on there. Figure out what's going on with that. I don't know if it's Z fighting or what. Oh, here comes Dawn. Very good. Now let's jump to another time period. Let's go jump to this time period. Okay, we should have the complete church complete with roofs, so I don't know why the roofs have not popped back into place here, so that's another issue. So again, there's not a whole lot to do right now in this period. Okay, finally we've got some artifacts that are deciding that we can't actually visit them. Can't visit this artifact. It already exists in this time. So we are here, and it was picked up here at 200. There's temporal shifts. I don't think there is a temporal shift detected, so that's an interesting thing. This artifact exists in this long time span we, right, we have. we're at when this object was picked up, so we could use that if we wanted, but there's no time period to travel to, and this exists outside the time period. That's inside our span between now and the other end of the portal. This exists in our span. Yeah. Okay, so those, those are right. So these are the only two objects we can use to time travel. Well, we can use this object too. We can always go back shouldn't be able to open the artifact because it's already been opened. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, so I need to work on that. So this will jump us right to here. This will jump us to this time period. And this we haven't come up with one. We shouldn't be able to use this one because it it is also from it exists in our time span. When did we collect it? We collected it right here, so we really shouldn't be able to use this one anyway. Let's go ahead and use it. There's gonna be no change. Okay. Except that we're missing the top here. And we've got a. We're randomly missing some buttresses. Nice. We're not some buttresses, but we're randomly missing some walls. That's an interesting issue. What happens if we jump back to where we were? Ooh, see, now we're getting all sorts of fun, random stuff showing up. So, what if we jump back? the other time. Oh yeah, and then also this is an unstable artifact, so at some point we're going to run out of our boundaries. We're going to run out of time, or we're going to run out of space. If we don't go anywhere, we're not going to run out of space, but are we going to run out of time? I think this has something like a minute on its timer. No, we're still doing pretty well. Strange staticky noise? Oh, thank you. Sorry, valid user. Um, I think that strange staticky noise 
here. Let me let me move this strange static noise down. All right. So tell me if that strange static noise is gone, or if it's better. Fixed. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that was just my that was just my environment there. That's just my um the strange static you noise know, is supposed to be it's actually waves and wind. Um but it's good to know that it just sounds like a lot of strange static. It's a little too noisy, I think. Yeah. Cause technically you're on an island, so you should be always able to hear the kind of surf in the background and the wind. Um but I've I've toned it down for now. So thanks for letting me know, valid user. Right, so um, I've managed to do a lot of time jumping here, but I'm not running out of, so I'm in an unstable time period, but I'm not actually experiencing that instability. And if I keep going this way, I should start to run out of, oh yeah, that worked. That worked. So that jumped me back to my last stable time. So that was good. So it was unstable in location. So that was a good thing. Uh, but it wasn't, it, it should have only allowed us to sit back here for a little while. And this, this pyramid hat shouldn't be there either. Well, actually it depends on what time period we're in now. No, we're in, we're in this time period, the time period of this scallop shell. So actually it should have that pointy pyramid hat, but the other thing should have disappeared. So there's a few things to, to fix, but the exciting thing is, is that it's not, the whole system isn't falling over. Um, I would expect it to kind of come, come down to a crash. So um, one period we can't visit right now is this period. And so I just used a cheat because we didn't have an artifact to get us there. Um, but our ghosts are appearing in the wrong time. These ghosts can, can appear whenever they want, but this ghost really shouldn't be there and neither should this ghost. Um, and these really shouldn't be there either. I'm thinking about it. I bet they've appeared there because I've given them the wrong time span rather than there being anything wrong with my logic although my logic is always terrible so yeah let's just rebuild this <laughs> that's right. Reject reality and substitute my own. That's um that's kind of the way this whole thing works right now. Another thing that should have happened when those three bits got rebuilt is that I should have a thatch roof covering on this. It should have um should have appeared. And it didn't. So not quite sure why that's happened either. If we jump back in time to where we were previously. Yep, all of that should go away, so that's a good thing. So yeah, we, and, so we, there's a few things um, that, are, that are going on incorrectly here. So our this is where we're at right now in this 563 date. This is the other end of our wormhole at 1650. Um, some of these objects here should, we should not be able to, we should be able to get to this time because it exists outside this span. That one exists right at where we're at. This one exists in the past. This one exists right in the middle. And so we, it should be grayed out. I'm still having some trouble with the way the inventory logic is running. And that one is also fine.
It's the only thing that's going to change on this. We've <laughs> it's good to sort of abuse the system by jumping around in time so much. Um, that little pointy hat shouldn't be there. It looks like that little pointy hat, now that it's on, is going to stay. When I know much about text areas, such a strange and cool concept. Yeah, we're jumping through time here, but the logic of the time isn't working very well. But that's um, that's my problem. Um, I, I'm going to fix it. It's I haven't set the time spans of these objects correctly, but text areas. Um, thank you. So yeah, what are your questions about text areas? Um, there's like this is this is the only main text area here. Um, let's see if I can actually get a description anywhere. So yeah, so what are, what are your uh, questions about them? Because I find them kind of difficult to work with too. And don't get me started on uh, on scrolling text areas. Okay. The debug dev GUI with Unity's I am GUI. Only accept numbered input. Um, that would be a really nice thing. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Um, let's go take a look really quickly. So I don't have... I was going to say that in this kind of GUI, I'm just using the the U GUI. Um, and I don't have any, I guess, input area for invalid conversion. I was just thinking that you could... I suppose, I was just wondering if you could actually kind of set a text area to um, to only accept certain input, but I'm not sure I've got a text input area anywhere in here. Let me just think about this for a moment. No, see, this is all just going to be, this is purely just a text display. So what's your not too performant way? Because I thought of a way that would be silly, because it wouldn't prevent the user from entering invalid data, but it wouldn't accept the data if it was invalid. So yeah, so kind of one bonehead way I would do, making cases for catching it in the update, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, so it's always, so in update you're always running a check on the input. Yeah, that isn't too performant. Um, the, I think there's a way you can put a mask on it. Um, yeah, let's just think about that for a minute, just for kicks. Um, let's go see what we've got. So like this is a text mesh pro input field. Where have I put it? I was just hoping that in the text mesh pro input field, you could, you could put a mask on it. I don't even know where this is existing. Let's find out. Where do you exist? Okay, you're existing somewhere. 
oh you i just accidentally stuck the text input field thing straight on my my original uh text thing but that's okay um text viewport text component navigation input field settings content type yeah there we go um Yeah, how how can I get this to um, how can I get this to not be grayed out? I think probably because I've got two things sitting on top of each other. Maybe I should make a new component here. Let's uh, remove that component and let's create a new piece of UI somewhere. I don't want to just add that component. Yeah, that's the wrong thing as well. But anyway, yeah, it's probably somewhere there. Yeah, yeah. That's what I would do, a content type check. I just got to figure that one out for a little bit myself. I am considering putting in um, some text input as well to allow users to name different areas of the island in a way that's meaningful for them. Um, but I kind of have kind of set that to one side because I don't want to deal with validating user input either. So uh, I've just been kind of procrastinating on that. But good question. Um, and I need to kind of, I need to kind of dig through this a little bit more as well. Yeah, so you might want to might want to mess around with that. I had thought that in an earlier version, at least, you could also put in some sort of mask that would essentially do what you were talking about. Kind of every frame, I guess, as long as there was there was text being entered, so it wouldn't do it every frame. It would just be that whenever it was changed, whenever the content was changed to the input field, it would go through and it would it would do a kind of a sanity check. Um, so probably that wasn't too performant, but because it was only happening while there was essentially focus on that input field, um, it wasn't gonna hit your game too much. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. UI is something that uh, I don't, I, I really like to design, but then actually wiring everything up to make it work right, something I tend to kind of leave because I like to procrastinate on that one. Here we go. So I'm going to just take a look through my settings here to figure out why I was having all those kind of issues with like that little hat appearing on top of the tower and things like that. Um, so I'm just gonna jump in here. That little hat is this game object, which is called a norm pyramid roof. There it is. And I'm gonna see when I said that it should exist. So it should exist between 1150 and 2500, which is probably not true. Um, that top should get replaced by, really that top should get replaced by sort of 1450 or so. I'm looking to see where my other roofs go. They're, they're on at 1400. So let's get that pyramid roof being replaced around 1399. Yeah, so I wonder why that pyramid roof was appearing really when it shouldn't. The other big thing is why 
when I was rebuilding the whole nave of the building, why the roof wasn't appearing. And I was checking onto this, checking into this this weekend. Um, oh yeah, I'm looking in the wrong place. And I thought that the scripts were doing what I told them to. I had set the dates incorrectly. But now that I look at it again, I'm not quite sure that's the case. Which is what we have all this stuff going on in here. So I'm just going to clear out my console here. And I'm just going to run through what we ran through before. And I'm going to watch, I'm going to turn off that pyramid roof because we don't need that on. Okay, where'd that go? Tower roofs. Norm pyramid roof. Okay, you can turn off for now. Okay, so I'm going to see what's going on with my, with my roofs, my, my big roof that appears here. Just going to check my logic. And we're going to run through that one more time, and I'm going to pay attention to the console here. And it'll probably throw an audio error again, but that didn't seem to crash anything, so that's fine. But I'm just going to run through that and see what's happening in the logic, the time travel logic here. But that means we have to jump through this hoop again, so bear with me. off again. Let's get that frag so that we can build this window. And let's get that frag so that we can just build the short tower. And let's put this back together. Yep thrown that audio error. Okay, so we have done a time travel right there. We just caught that. And uh, the roof that should go over this part of the building, it's reporting that it traveled back to 2300, the current time was 2500, and it's not in target or in current, which is correct. So let's grab this one choose a word for it, open the portal. Now we're going to time travel and we should get another report, but we're not getting another report from the roof. Let's not collapse these. Okay. Oh, it's turned itself off off. I think that's one problem. Yeah, everything's off there. Just taking a look here to see. So it thinks it's occupied, but it thinks it's locked. All right, let's see what happens. Build those up. Definitely going to change the length of audio on that. Because those sound silly. Okay. We're just getting all the unlocks called on all the different objects. So that's fine. rebuild this properly, put a pointed arch in instead of around. Yeah, I gotta get a better sound effect. Oh, 
Okay, that should... That should have built our roof. We should have a roof there, but instead... So it says it's no longer locked, so that was triggered correctly. But it never turned on any of these objects. All of these objects should have turned on. So it did. It broadcast the unlock on the Norman Roof Group. Yep, and it unlocked it. Because this object isn't locked and this object isn't locked. But that unlocker never, never turned on any of the children. So all the children should be turned on here. They should all be switched on. And they should all be, what time are we in here? Let's see. I guess they're all in time A. So yeah, so I don't know why the roof hasn't come back on yet, even when I turned it on. So that's fun. Hmm. All right, so that's a mystery. A mystery we need to solve. Because I should have a nice roof here. All their, oh, all their mesh renderers are off. So it's got to do two things. It's got to turn the mesh renderers back on. Even that's not helping, though. That's interesting. Just looking to check to see here. What else I am missing? They're on, the renderers are on. Hmm. No, they're in the right time. Yeah, I gotta investigate that further. Well, the sun's coming up through my window now this morning and the clock says it's time to get the kids to school. So I've gotta sign off for now. Um, Valid user, good luck with your text input fields and uh, and limiting what you put into it. Um, I hope that works out for you, and uh, that helped me to to help to remind me that I need to look into those fields as well, eventually, because I want the user to name areas of the of the site as well. But uh, I've got to sign off, so it's nice talking to you, valid user. Good luck, and um, I'll be back on on Wednesday morning around the same time. So I will see you then. Bye, everybody.